Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So this weekend I hosted my very first capsule wardrobe workshop in real life and I never really thought that this was something that I was gonna do really. I've been creating online content for nearly five years and I've been doing YouTube for I think almost four years now. As much as I love creating online content, like this is my job and this is my whole world, I love what I do, nothing really beats meeting people in real life and you know like-minded people getting some feedback on the stuff that you do and this whole experience was just so amazing this is so new for me um, I'm definitely keen on doing this a lot more if anything in Denmark at least um, I'll look into the possibility of maybe coming to Copenhagen or just other places in Denmark and sharing the way that I do things I know that there are a lot of other people who do this and who offer similar workshops about sustainable fashion which, which i think is amazing i'm not here to try to compete with anyone i hope we all win i think it's amazing that we're so many people in this slow fashion army both in real life or on youtube wherever trying to just spread our messages and the way that we like to do things and then hopefully someone will tag along some people who can like relate to the way that we each individually choose to do things. So I thought that now that a lot of you guys are not living in Denmark and didn't have the possibility of coming to this workshop that I hosted on Saturday, it would be fun to turn it into sort of like an online course. And I've done how to build a capsule wardrobe before on my channel. I think the very first one I did was three or four years ago when I started my channel. So there's a lot of people who've come to my channel since then and I feel like I've changed my own ways a bit over the years as well. I've mentioned it in different videos, how I do things today, but I feel like it's time with an updated version of how to build a capsule wardrobe. I'm gonna try to do sort of like a short version of the workshop that I did on Saturday because these were around one hour each because, you know, it was more like a dialogue and I had a great discussion with the people who, who met up to the workshop. So I'm not gonna make an hour long video today. And uh, with that, I think I better wrap up this introduction and let's dive into the course. So first of all, what is a capsule wardrobe? To me, a capsule wardrobe is a way to structure your wardrobe, basically. It's a way to structure your wardrobe that's gonna help you build a more inspiring wardrobe, a more long-lasting one, one that you want to wear over and over again, which is pretty sustainable in itself and that's why a capsule wardrobe is perfect in terms of sustainability. I can't take credit for this way of building your wardrobe. Um, I think that when you look up the phrase capsule wardrobe or the, the, like the term capsule wardrobe, you'll find yourself on Wikipedia pretty quickly and you'll find out that some people say it actually origins from London. So there was a woman in London who had a store in the 70s, a woman called Susie Fo, And the whole concept of the store was kind of like this capsule wardrobe thing. So she would have only basic stuff in her store. So basically she would always sell the same things that would never go out of fashion. So you always kind of knew what, what to expect of this store. And then she would um, spice up everything with a few season pieces each season. So that's basically the capsule wardrobe in a nutshell. Like the way I do it personally is by dividing my wardrobe and 80% all your basics that pretty much always remain the same all throughout the year that just work for me and my lifestyle. And then I have 20%, so like a little part of my wardrobe that are more seasonal based. So it fits the season, it could be the colors, it can be the materials or the fits, something that's just suitable for the season. And in Denmark, we have four different seasons, so I will change up my wardrobe every three months, except that huge part of my wardrobe that always remains the same. So that's really the capsule wardrobe in a nutshell. So why is a capsule wardrobe or sustainable fashion this buzzword that everyone keeps talking about today? Why is everyone talking about sustainability? Um, to me it all started when I used to work as a designer. I am originally a designer, so a technical designer is actually what you call it. And with this education you're able to work for commercial fashion brands. So really you design clothes and you make like technical drawings to send out to the people in the production basically. So um, I 
got aware of the problem of the fashion industry pretty early on in this whole thing. Um, I got my first few internships, my first few jobs. I didn't work in the industry for that long before I kind of find out that I'm not sure this is the way I want to, to contribute to the fashion industry. So I took a break, I went back to school and I took a bachelor in communication and media strategy. Um, still with sort of like a fashion um, angle because you know, fashion is my passion, really cliche, but that's just how it is. I'm a creative person who's been, I've been loving fashion for years. So I wanted to stick with fashion, but I wanted to open some more doors and go away from the, like the designing part of it a bit for a while. So I went back to school, started communication and media strategy and we just had a lot of cases about our society and the way that we consume we had a lot of cases about how we you know we want everything to be almost free and we don't really care about our stuff or our clothing we want everything to be really cheap but we don't really think about who will pay the rest of that price for us and that's what I realized so I stumbled upon the documentary called The True Cost and I'm sure many of you have already watched the documentary it's been on Netflix I'm not sure it's there anymore Oscar, do snog us get. Hey, Oscar. I'm in the bedroom right now and he's laying on the bed sleeping, so that's why there's some snoring in the background. Anyway, I um, I stumbled upon the, the true cost and I watched that documentary. The trailer's here on YouTube if you want to watch the trailer. Really, I think the trailer says a lot. So if you don't dare to watch the whole, whole thing, then definitely watch the trailer. I think that anyone in the fashion industry, whether you are working in the fashion industry or whether you're just a consumer who, who loves fashion, you should definitely watch that trailer um, because it's such an eye opener. And I think that even though these really hard facts can be hard for us to deal with, sometimes I think they are important. Um, I try to stay positive throughout my channels, um, all of my social platforms. As I've actually just written a blog post about this whole thing about staying positive in the whole debate of climate change and sustainability because I'm definitely one of those people who struggles so much with anxiety. Like I'm afraid of everything already and eco-anxiety eco is no joke to me. Like I am so scared. But I recently wrote a blog post about this whole thing that I, I definitely try to stay post positive as well because that's sort of a mental sustainability for me. So sort of like a way for me to su survive or rather actually a way to live. So I feel like it's very important to to stay positive, but all of these really harsh and tough facts are really important because they are what will make us think and really try to challenge ourselves. So that's why I feel like that documentary is so important, even if you think that it's, it's so scary and you, you can't really bring yourself to watch it. There are some great like positive stories in the documentary as well, so definitely watch it if you can. I have my slideshow over here, so that's why I'm kind of like reaching for my computer. Right, so just a few more facts about sustainability and why it's so important, especially in terms of fashion. I'm sure many of you have heard before that the fashion industry is among one of the, the most polluting industries in the world. Um, and it's not so weird because uh, these are some facts from like the Danish um, research center called Miljøstyrelsen, so the climate research center, I guess you can roughly translate it to that. And these are from 2018. Not gonna like bore you with too many of these facts, but I just want to like bring some of them on the table so you can see why it's so important to maybe build a capsule wardrobe. So one fact I definitely think is important to mention is the fact that from the year 2000 and then until 2006, the global CO2 um, emission that were like let from the fashion industry and out into the universe, it rose with 35%. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that a lot of fast fashion brands and like concepts has appeared ever since then. So I think that just the whole way that we've been consuming fashion really, really changed in those years. And that's why this number just keep like, it just kept rising. So fast fashion is these brands that introduce new clothing almost every week. Um, there are a lot of brands who don't have, you know, just the four classic seasons or collections per year that we used to have. Now they have 52 collections so that means new clothing every single week and it sort of creates this false like need for the consumer because you're led to think or led to believe all the time that you need these new stuff to stay in the loop and to stay trendy and at the same time the new or the the trendy pieces that are found in these stores are just they're actually designed to go out of fashion really really fast so that means that we just dispose a lot of fashion items 
to try to, to stay trendy all the time. And this is definitely one of the reasons why I felt the need to just, you know, get out of the hamster wheel. Like, both as a consumer, but also like working as a designer, it was too much, it just went too fast. So it's everyone in the industry, it's everyone like involved in producing these clothes, from the designer in the office to the people in the pr production who often have like really poor working environment, which you will also see in that documentary that I mentioned before. Um, so there's just so many reasons to, to get out of this hamster wheel, to say, you know what, fast fashion, no more. I'm not gonna be a part of it. It stresses me out, it stresses out the entire industry, it stresses out our environment it's not really good for anything so here's a little bit of a background story for you guys that's actually how i got the idea for my channel it's kind of like a mix of all of these things like studying communication media strategy and getting aware of our like consumptionist kind of community or society and then just like this urge to try and slow down and to use less and that's really why my channel is called useless it might not be very original but that's kind of the idea that came to my mind and then also it's kind of like a wordplay on using less of the useless so for those of you wondering why would you call your channel useless like is your content useless um it's sort of a wordplay so just some background info for you there and also some reasons why i think it's really important for people like any fashionista to get involved with slow fashion and sustainable fashion So before delving into how to build a capsule wardrobe and to get a look at how I've built mine, um, I think it's really important to also discuss what it means to be a sustainable consumer. Um, because to me, that's definitely something I've learned. Being sustainable when it comes to, to consuming is not black and white. Like there's not one right or wrong way to do this. It's really important for me that people understand that we all have different starting points, we all have different amounts of knowledge, we all have like different social circumstances and different kinds of jobs, different budgets, and it's not gonna be the same right for everyone. So I think it's really important not to be that person who like will lift your finger, point at everyone one else and like call them out for doing it wrong or not doing it well enough. I feel that if you're really truly um, involved in sustainability and very interested in this field, you will do what you can. You'll keep failing, keep getting back and trying to, to do better all the time, but you can never do perfect. And I think it's really important we don't point out each other's imperfections because the way things are right now, it's not the norm to live like this and we will all make mistakes. That's just how it is. Of course, we can guide each other, we can inspire each other, but being negative and pointing your fingers at others, you know, to me, that's not a way of doing it. I will rather like inspire people, lead the way, but I will, I want to be positive. I want this, especially like my platform. I really hope that when everything, like the whole climate change debate becomes too much and a little too overwhelming that, you know, I can offer you a place to breathe for a little while, you know, it's not about forgetting about sustainability because we need to challenge ourselves, but we also need to breathe and stay positive. At least that's that's how I feel. Um, and I hope you guys will, will tag along in that whole thing as well. Okay, so getting back to the capsule wardrobe. I hope you guys are still watching. I hope you're still with me. I'm sure many of you guys are watching this video if you're interested in fashion, um, if you have a passion for fashion, that you can sometimes feel overwhelmed when you look inside of your closet. Like you can get that feeling of having nothing to wear, but really you have an overflowing closet. And that's how I felt before I started with the capsule wardrobe. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get out of this hamster wheel that I felt so stuck within. Um, I felt guilty for spending so much money on pointless clothing, like just buying every sort of thing because I thought it was pretty and it was fun and, you know, never really had a purpose with the things that I bought. And I never really thought about how this one item that I bought and brought home with me would suit with the rest of the items that I have had in my wardrobe, which resulted in me, again, feeling like I had nothing to wear because I didn't really know how to put together these things. And that's sort of the root of a capsule wardrobe and that's how a capsule wardrobe can really help you out. So a capsule wardrobe is a little collection of shoes and clothing that you love to wear again and again that you've really like put a lot of thought into it and made sure that everything fits together. Um, and also it's 
sort of designed for you not to worry about winter clothing during the summertime, for example. So you will pack away the things that are not in season so you can bring them back out again when the seasons change. And, and that way you sort of get to, to um, shop your own wardrobe, but without spending any money and without harming the environment. Many of you who've been following me for a long time, you've already seen my capsule wardrobes and my basic wardrobe a lot of times, but I'm gonna show it anyway because there are probably some people who don't know anything about this who are watching this video, I, at least I hope so. So this is what my all year basic wardrobe looks like. And like I mentioned earlier, it's sort of like 80% of my everyday wardrobe that looks like this. And it pretty much stays the same all throughout the year. I don't really touch it. Of course, it's not 100% static because my life isn't. I could change my job tomorrow and I might need to change out some of the sneakers. Maybe I need to wear more heels or whatever the reason for changing up the, the whole thing might be. Um, also, if I wear something out or if you just find out that, you know, I'm not really wearing this item, I'm gonna pack it away or sell it, I'm gonna replace it with something else, I completely can do that. But I think that especially in the beginning, it's really important that you stick to the rules and you really try to challenge yourself so you can learn something from this whole thing. I've been doing it for four years, so I've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, my capsule wardrobe's actually gotten better over the years. And another thing that's really important for, for you guys to understand that this is gonna be a process for you. So if you decide after watching this video that, right, I'm gonna try building a capsule wardrobe, it's really important that um, you don't stress too much about the whole process. It's, it's gonna be a process. It's not gonna be something that happens overnight. So you start with what you have. Don't start from scratch because that's completely unsustainable. That's not the point. I have items here in my wardrobe or my wardrobe here behind me that I've had for years ever since I started. So it's really about tweaking things and making sure that you don't stress the whole process. Also, let me just tell you right off the bat that this is just how my wardrobe looks like. Your wardrobe doesn't have to look this minimalistic and this colorless. You don't have to have as many jeans as I do if you enjoy wear dresses. If you enjoy wearing floral prints more and more colors, do that. You know, the whole point with a capsule wardrobe or really well thought out capsule wardrobe is that it, it's meant and designed, you know, for your life and your lifestyle and your style. So this is just what my capsule wardrobe looks like. I feel like a lot of this is really classic and very basic. It's something that we've seen for years and that's what makes it so timeless and great. Um, but you might have the definition, you know, another definition of what is timeless and what is basic. So follow your heart, like cliche, so cliche, but look inside yourself and make sure you, you think about what feels right for you. When I did the workshop in real life this weekend, um, some women actually asked me if I wanted to do some of these overviews with examples of how you could build a colorful wardrobe, like how I would do it. And, you know, I've been asked a lot about this over the years and I actually might go along to do it. Um, I'm, I might do it at some point, um, but I just need to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Maybe I'll um, find someone that I can do like a case with. <clears throat> so maybe I have a, a girl like in my network who has a very colorful style that will allow me to try and capsule wardrobe her. And um, then I'll share the whole process with you guys. Maybe can teach you something. Um, definitely get back to you with that whole thing. Maybe we can turn it into some sort of a series where I give you different examples of clients that I help building a capsule wardrobe that don't necessarily have the same style as mine. So I made a video recently called six mistakes to avoid when you're building a capsule wardrobe. I'll link it here on the screen for you so you can go check it out after watching this video or some other time. So one of the mistakes that I mentioned in this video is try not to copy someone else's capsule wardrobe. And again, that's just to, to underline the fact that it's really important that you build one that works for you. So this way of doing my capsule wardrobe just makes me feel a lot less stressed and I feel like you know, I can every morning when I open up my wardrobe and when I look at my rail here behind me, it's really inspiring for me when I look at my wardrobe. Like I want to wear it. I want to combine the things I have in my wardrobe. I want to take good care of it. And again, that's the whole point with a well thought out capsule wardrobe. Like I've mentioned, everything can be combined with each other. I have some things here that are very timeless. I could be worn both day and night as well, which is also really essential. So there's a bit of everything for the life that I'm living and the events that are in my life. Before we get into the different steps of how to build a capsule wardrobe, I just want to mention a few tools that might be helpful for you. If you love this way of building a visual capsule wardrobe um, the way that I've done, um, let me just tell you that these overviews that I share with you, I've made mine in Photoshop. So if you love Photoshop, 
just get started. I've taken pictures of most of my own clothing just on the floor and then I've deleted the background and put it into the overview. Um, so some of the items I've also just found online like directly from the brand's website because that's a lot easier. If you don't know how to use Photoshop or you just don't want to spend so much time doing this whole thing because it's, it is very time consuming doing it this way. There are some apps out there made to do this exact same thing and to help you create a visual overview just in a lot easier way. So there's the app called Cladwell. Some of you might already know it. I've mentioned it a lot of times on my channel before. It's only for iPhone though. So for those of you who don't have an iPhone, I can definitely recommend Closet Space, which is a very similar kind of app. The whole point with these apps is that you can actually register your wardrobe in the app. So you just pick out some items from a library that's already in there. Um, and then you pick out items that are similar to the ones you have in your own wardrobe. In Cladwell, I know you can also add your own photos. So if you can't find what you're looking for in the in the library, you can find them online maybe, and then add them to the to the library. And then you just, you get a really nice overview of your wardrobe and it can also generate automatic outfits for you. So if you feel a bit uninspired or you need some inspiration on how to style a certain item in de multiple different ways, these apps can really be a very helpful tool for you. And not only in terms of like um, just keeping an eye on your wardrobe and getting getting inspired every single day. Also in the process of building your capsule wardrobe um, because you can put in items or and a certain item and then see how it goes with the other items you have in there. If there's something you're considering buying, try to put it into the app and see how it looks with the rest of the items you have in there. If it doesn't look that nice or if you don't have enough opportunities, maybe you shouldn't invest in this certain item. So yeah, it's just a really great tool, both in a day-to-day -day basis when you need some inspiration on what to wear, but also in the whole planning process. I also like to use Cladwell when I travel. So I'm that type of person who likes to, to travel really light and I try to, to you know keep my, uh, my possibilities on a minimum because otherwise it just stresses me out. Um, that's why I have such a minimal approach to the capsule wardrobe. <clears throat> I would much rather have um, less options and then you know be creative with those fewer options but yeah when I'm traveling um, I like to use it as sort of a tool in the whole packing process as well so just a, such a helpful tool um, I'm not getting paid to mention any of these apps I just love them from the bottom of my heart and I wanted to share them with you guys so let's have a look at the way that I've structured my capsule wardrobe because the structure is super important. I have this picture that I shared of all my Instagram stories at some point and um, when we move into a new house this is definitely the way that I want to get back to doing it. Right now we live in a in a smaller apartment and we don't have a lot of closet space so I have all of my clothing on hangers here behind me. This works super well as well so if you live somewhere um, where you don't have a lot of space and you want your clothes to be out in the open so you can keep an eye on it and this is definitely a great solution as well but this is how I use to structure my wardrobe so as you can see I have all of my all your basics that's those 80% of my wardrobe that always remain the same at the end of those I have my seasonal items so items that are you know suitable maybe in color or material or fit for the specific season so this is the autumn season so I will have some brown items thrown in there um, because I feel like brown is a really timeless color for the autumn season, for example. Um, if it's summertime, I might have some summer dresses or a denim skirt, items like that hanging in the end of that all your basics rail. Then I have a few shelves with occasion wear, so clothing for special occasions. And um, that's another thing that I like to do with my capsule wardrobe is to section it in these different sorts of sections. So I like to have like a mini capsule wardrobe for my occasion wear because then I know I always have something to wear if I'm going to some sort of an event. I'm sure many of you know the feeling of, you know, stressing about going to a wedding on Saturday and you're like, oh, I need a new dress. But if you have a really well thought out basic occasion wear wardrobe where you can sort of also mix and match things a bit so they can look, the outfits can look a bit different, it will sort of help you again to not over consume and not just run out and buy stuff that you'll only wear once. I will get back to some ways of consuming um, fashion better like shopping so if you are the type of person who likes to, to get new things into your wardrobe um, because peace be with that some people just feel that way um, then I definitely have some ways that you can work around it around this and still stay sustainable but I'll get back to this later on in this video as you can also see I have some shoes in there I have some seasonal shoes I have a little box for my belts so different sorts of accessories 
Um, I have some basic tank tops and then I have some knitwear folded on a shelf because I don't hang these. It's not very good for the um, for knitwear in general to hang it up on hangers. Speaking of hangers, as you can see, I have most of my items hanging on hangers and there's a simple reason for that. And that's because I just find it a lot more um, inspiring and a lot easier to maintain in a busy daily life um, to just pop my clothes on a hanger and then put it back instead of folding it. And then if I don't do it properly, it will leave creases and then I have to steam it or iron it. So this is just a lot easier for me. It gives a nice overview of my wardrobe. Another reason why I like to hang my clothes on hangers is because when I wash it, I actually put it directly onto the hanger put it onto the um, like the drying rail or like the, the line dryer. And then the fabric will actually get kind of stretched because it's wet and because it's hanging. So um, the need for me to actually steam or iron a lot of my clothing is completely unnecessary. Um, and then when it's dry, I can just hang it directly into my closet. So really it just makes things so much easier, I think. Um, I have a lot of my clothing on these metal wire hangers and I know that they're probably not the most like the best thing because they can eventually leave marks on the shoulders. I've been doing this for years without any like real struggles or problems. You know, I already have these hangers, so I might as, I might as well use them. And I think it looks really great that they're all the same. Yeah, there are definitely other hangers out there that are, that are better um, for your clothing. So like a thicker, more durable, like wooden hanger is probably better, but this works pretty well for me. So now we get to the whole thing that this video is actually about and that is how to build a capsule wardrobe. I just feel like all the other background knowledge is really important before you start. So that's why I spent such a long time talking about all of these other things. So if you've jumped forward to this part, please give it a chance. Like go back and watch the other parts in this video because there's just so many things to think about and there it's, it's so much more than clothing. I have this very guide over on my blog and you can feel free to, to like have it open on your phone or your laptop, your iPad, maybe even print it out if you're like more of an old school person. Um, I'd always say that it's better to, to save the paper and then use some sort of an electronic device, but do what works for you. So have your computer or whatever next to you and then you know, go through your wardrobe like that. I've made everything into like drop down menus. So each step has like further information, also some videos, like older videos, some templates that you can follow and free, feel free to use. Um, and then just follow the different steps on how to, Oscar, follow the different steps on how to build a capsule wardrobe. So the very first step is to find your style. And I think that this is one of the most important steps um, in the whole thing besides the you know asking yourself why do I want to do this um, finding your style is so crucial because that is you know your capsule wardrobe needs to reflect your style and the, the life that you're living so really it's also important that you evaluate what you spend your life doing so ask yourself how much of the time do I go to my job you know what do I wear to my job how much of the time do I do other things? How many events do I go to throughout the week or the month or the year? Um, just so you can figure out how much you need in these different sections or areas in your wardrobe, basically. Um, and then also to figure out what kind of items you need, um, because you might have a shoe fetish, you might have a fetish for like high heels, but you never have any occasions to wear these. It's actually overconsumption, and it's definitely a reason to reevaluate the way that you consume. Um, so obviously the, the things that you invest in, they need to fit your lifestyle and the life that you're living in order to, to be sustainable, in order to take all of the stress away and really be inspiring for you, not make you feel guilty because you never wear it or whatever other way to make you feel guilty there might be. So the, the guide that I mentioned before have all of these little guides that I'm also mentioning right now in these steps like the drop down menu. So everything's really gathered in, in there for you to just get on with and I hope that it makes it a bit easier for you to get started. The next step is to empty your closet. So empty it completely. Once emptied um, it's really important that you just get everything out of your closet. So you start fresh. Um, if you have some extra time or energy, you can even clean like the closet space before you put in the, the clothing again. Then um, what I usually like to do is that I uh, divide my clothing into five different piles. So I make a pile with all of the clothing that I love. So all of the clothing that is definitely going back into my wardrobe. Sort of like a KonMari thing, 
like have a look at this item and ask yourself does this item bring me any joy like if it's a maybe you'll put it in the maybe pile if it's a no you'll put it in the no pile and then you'll maybe donate it or sell it and then try to stay away from these kinds of items in the future um take it as kind of like a learning experience as well then also make a pile for cl clothing that are off season that you don't need right now and the things that are in season that you love put that in the love pile and then you can also make a pile for the clothes that needs to be repaired before you can use it again so that can be shoes that needs to go to the cobblers maybe or a handbag that needs to get the strap fixed or a pair of pants that needs to be hemmed whatever it might be um, take some time and then find a day where you can sort of fix all of these things so you can start wearing them again then you basically put all of the clothing that are in season that you love and that are like great basics for you put that back into your closet and then you're ready to start wearing these all of the clothing that you need a break from that are sort of like maybe i'm not sure about this item but i might fall in love with it some other time and also all of the items that are off season stir them away i have my my clothing in like clear plastic boxes underneath our staircase right now stir them away and then when the seasons change you can go through them again um, and see if there's anything that you feel like getting re reunited with also i like to to carry sort of like a capsule wardrobe planner so really a little notebook where i write all of my thoughts by the end of the season or i also like to to write like wish lists in this capsule wardrobe planner so if you have some some gaps in your wardrobe or some things that you feel like you need you can write it into this planner um, you don't necessarily have to buy everything um, maybe you figure out that you don't need it anyway or you have something that works just as well already maybe you have something in your storage boxes that could like be that item that you feel like you're missing but maybe you sometimes just need something fresh and in, thrown into your wardrobe to keep all of the basic items fresh then you can make a shopping list and Again, I have another guide on how to make a really good shopping list and also some questions, like some really crucial questions to ask yourself before you buy to make sure it fits with your wardrobe and that you don't spend money or time or resources on something you're not gonna love and not gonna wear. As a rule of thumb, I always ask myself, do I see myself wearing this at least 20 times before I buy it? I also try to really think about, do I have enough items in my wardrobe already to wear this item with? Oscar. He's so far away in sleep, I'm just gonna let him snore. So yeah, a sustainable shopping guide can be found on my blog. I also made a guide recently here on my channel on how to shop sustainably online because there are definitely some important things to think about there as well. I have a lot of guides out there and um, this video is, is meant to kind of like gather them all up and really get you started on this whole thing. So if you live in a country like Denmark where you have four seasons, um, or you know regardless of how many seasons you have um, you can also do this even if you live somewhere where the climate stays the same um, just to kind of shake things up a bit every once in a while every three months when this when the seasons change I have a look at my wardrobe and I kind of have a look at what worked and what didn't I will maybe even put some notes into my capsule wardrobe planner so I can have a look at that you know for future seasons so i don't keep making the same mistakes so i find out what worked and what didn't i pack away stuff that i need to get a break from i find the things that i've stored away that are suitable for the season or that i've just missed and i shop my own wardrobe um, get reunited with some of my older favorites and then um, i will gather up items that need to be repaired so for example after the winter season i like to gather up all of my boots and then send them off to the cobblers and get them like resold and get them fixed up so they're ready for a new season so really give your wardrobe some love maybe you can even clean it clean the shelves and remove bubbles on knitwear that needs to to like have a smooth surface again that you've been wearing a lot over the winter not only in order for it to last in the long run as well but also just to like handle these items with respect for you know you, you've spent some resources there's been some people involved in the whole design process the whole pr production process that's made this item available for you treat it with some respect you know try to, to to change your mindset a bit so the few rules for the capsule wardrobe system like the traditional capsule wardrobe system that many people like to follow um there's also project 333 she likes to have like 33 items for 33 days there's unfancy and that's she's actually the one who inspired me to begin with uh, to build a capsule wardrobe and then i've just tweaked it over the years to fit my own ways and my own style so yeah there are some rules that most people like to follow 
follow, especially in the beginning. And I think I mentioned this early in the, the video that I feel like the rules are great, a great thing to rely on, especially in the beginning to really challenge yourself. But then along the way, should you really learn to, to you know, get to know yourself and, and your habits and your style. I think it's really important that you try to tweak the rules so that they fit you and your lifestyle. But in the beginning, in order to challenge yourself and really try to change your ways, I feel like the rules are quite important actually. So most people end up somewhere between 35 to 40 items in total in their wardrobes. And right now in my own autumn capsule wardrobe, I think I have around 39 items in my wardrobe. And there are some things that count in these in this number and there are some things some things that doesn't count and let me just say really quick that even though you know you, these items don't really count try to not over consume these items so definitely if you have a problem with a thing as like bags and accessories that don't count in this whole thing maybe you should count them anyway um if you have a, a tendency to over consume these type these types of items so so if you have a tendency to overconsume, for example, bags and accessories, maybe you should count them anyway. So really, to, to really try to, to, to challenge your way of consuming and to make sure you don't overconsume these items. But things like underwear and socks and accessories, jewelry, um, your workout wear, your practical wear that you like paint the house in or go gardening in, like all of these things don't count in your everyday capsule wardrobe. And then basically everything else does count. So all of your shoes and your jackets, your pants, your um, shirt, your blouses, your dresses, everything else basically counts. And then you can always like divide it into little mini capsule wardrobes. So what I have behind me, which is the, like the biggest part of my wardrobe is my everyday wardrobe and then I have smaller sections like that mini capsule for occasion wear that I like to turn to every once in a while. Generally speaking about wardrobe structure I think it's it's great to kind of section your wardrobe in these different sections or capsules really. So I think this is basically that's all I wanted to mention that is my capsule wardrobe what why and how that I wanted to share with you guys today or kind of like my online version of that workshop that I did this past Saturday. Of course I gave the people who who were on these workshops a sheet that they could work with already on the workshop. Um, so actually just a piece of paper where they could put down words about their own life and their lifestyle and their yeah th those very first important steps like finding your style and defining your life and your lifestyle. But uh, yeah you can definitely do this on your own just put it on a piece of paper Paper, maybe put it in a notebook or whatever you, you feel like doing. Again, like I mentioned before, I know that we're a lot of people who are making these guides and I think it's amazing. I'm not trying to compete with anyone. I just find it so amazing that we're so many people in this army of, of slow fashion and sustainability who are just trying to help other people go down the same road. Use whatever guide feels, feels right for you. If you feel like using mine, then thank you so much. So one last thing I want to mention before wrapping up this video, when you start figuring out what your style is, I can definitely highly recommend Pinterest. Um, I have a, my own Pinterest account as well, where I have a lot of different Pinterest boards with inspiration for everyday wear, occasion wear, work wear or practical wear, just anything I can think of. Um, I've actually been thinking about doing sort of like a tag library because I know that some people have, you know, they have trouble finding the tags for what, you know, the search tags that they write in the search bar. I definitely already know what I want to search for. Like I always put in like minimal outfits or um, simple outfits because that's what my style is. But if you have trouble defining what kind of tags that you need to search for, kind of crucial to make a, to have like a, a successful Pinterest account where, with a lot of images that you can get inspired by in your daily life. So I'll see if I can work on making sort of like a, a tag library with all of the different tags that I can think of. If you have any specific tags that you like to, to search for, definitely leave them down below. That would be so helpful. So really the tags are what you search for. So if you have a feminine style, you put in the tag feminine or casual or edgy. Um, tomboyish, minimalistic, colorful. There are many different tags that you can search for on Pinterest and then basically just pin all of the images you find inspiring so you can kind of get inspired by these outfits to create outfit combis with what you have in your wardrobe. Yep, like I said, I think this is all that I wanted to mention. Don't forget that if you have any questions, which I'm sure you probably have, make sure you check out my full guide before you leave a comment with a question because the answer might be in that guide for you guys to have a look at. So there's 
a lot more tips in that complete guide, a lot more shopping tips, sustainable fashion brands that you can follow, how to be better at shopping secondhand, how to use what you have in a way that you don't get bored. I've tried to cover everything, um, but definitely if there's something you don't get answered in that guide, then definitely leave it down below. Leave any other thoughts you might have down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that um, this gave you some newfound inspiration. I hope that I can get out there and do more of these workshops in the future because I thought it was, it, it was just so fun. It was so amazing meeting like-minded people in real life, as I said. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a lovely day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.